Shalom, shalom, my son, Christ bless. Shalom. Son, Christ bless. The new moon is real. Praises. Oh, praise. I wonder if somebody could see and hear me. <laughs> Been a minute. Trying to figure out how to load this joint up. I'm getting started in about three minutes. Hey, shalom, shalom. Colorado camp. All oh, praise and most high. All oh, praise. Hey, shalom, shalom. Sister Tanara. I hope I said it right. Hey, shalom, shalom, everybody. All praise to the Most High. All praises. Hey, it's good to get on here and see people be waiting on the class, man. That, you know, leadership bring through, bring forth. All praises, man. All praises. Yeah. Michael Rubin. Prince. Princess. Nefaris. Praise to the most high. All right, y'all. I'm getting ready to get started here in two minutes. Oh, praises. Hope everybody enjoyed their new moon, man. Yeah, we um down here in Houston. We cut a rug last night. Didn't even want to go home. Didn't even want to go home, man. Go well after midnight. I'm praying some more, sir. All right. I'm going to get ready to send up the prayers. Get ready to send up the prayers, man. This volume down on this thing. I think it's right here. Wait one second, Israel. All right, there we go. Got that. All right, cool. All right. Let's set this thing up. I ain't got my IT team today, man. I usually try to have a team with me. I'll bring forth this class. All right, but nevertheless, we're definitely about to get started. All right, so brothers, have your head uncovered. Sisters, cover your head and send up the prayers. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. <laughs> trumpets down. Lord God. We ask you to continue to watch over us, Lord. We pray you continue to, to heal us, Lord, as a nation, Lord, to continue bringing in the lost sheep, Lord, to keep thy commandments, Lord. We pray you continue to watch over leadership as they travel out of the country overseas, Lord, that you protect them while they're there and bring them back home safely, Lord. We pray your word continue coming forth, Lord, to heal our nation, Lord, to build us back up to that great people that you called us to be, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for more... to. We pray that you continue to bless us with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, Lord, to continue to heal us, Lord. We know that thy word heals us, Lord. Lord, we pray you continue gathering us together, Lord, giving us a mind, Lord, to walk up right before thee and to love our neighbors as ourselves. All these things we ask in your dear son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. All right, Israel. Everybody is in a good mood this morning. I feel a little sluggish, but overall, shoot, man, I'm good. I'm good. Finally made it back to the Sabbath yesterday. Had been out a little bit uh, due to my rib being under the weather. But nevertheless, man, one thing about it, the work don't stop. The work don't stop, man. Even if you ain't here, you got to keep working. All right, so I know I didn't post the class. We got a scribe on here this morning. We 
got a scribe this morning. Do we have a scribe? A brother willing to scribe? Who we got? Who we got? I see your brother Kevin Kevin Moore. And the brother ready to scribe. Who we got? I don't see nobody yet. All right, so one other thing I did not do yet was the disclaimer. Let me get this real quick. Give me one second, Israel. Here we go. I'm gonna read this real quick. All right. So, um, so disclaimer: We are not a hate group. We're not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities uh, to bring awareness to any possible threat as, as stated in Leviticus chapter five, verse one. All right, so that's what we believe in. That's what we stand on. It's in the Bible. All right. Hey, today uh, class is gonna be, um, the title is, might have a kind of long title, but hey, you know, I still didn't see if a brother's gonna scribe. I kind of stepped away. All right, I guess I'll find out in a second. All right, today's class is keeping the commandments is the will of God, right? Slash, you will be judged according to your works. So, of course, if you ain't keeping his commandments, you're gonna be judged for that, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let's go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark 3 and 35. Mark 3, 35. If any brother step up to scribe, that would be perfect. All right, let me get over here. Mark chapter 3 and verse 35. All right. Mark 3 and 35. For whosoever shall do the will of God... The same is my brother and my sister and my mother. See that? So we must be keeping the commandments of God. So guess what Christ said? That you, the same is like his mother, his brother, his sister. You see that? So we have to be keeping it because guess what he said? I must be about my father's business. I ain't come to do my own will. So we got to be doing the same thing. Now, when we come to do our own way, it's all about us, what I can gain, my status, my name, you know, uh, all about you. No, this is not all about you. Matter of fact, I'm going to digress for a second, but I'm going to come right back. Uh, okay, all praise. Appreciate you, Michael Israel, posting a precept. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. Yeah, so it's not about us, what we think and how we feel and things like that. It's not about us. First Corinthians. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You see that? So it ain't about us. It's about the ultimate sacrifice that he came and made. So, all right. I just wanted to throw it out there. All right. Uh, let's go back to Mark real quick. 335. So I determined not to know anything among you, say Jesus Christ and him crucified. Uh, we had a guy come up to camp yesterday. want to tell us his testimony. I'm like, bro, this, uh, you, you came to the wrong place, man. This, it ain't about us. All right, so I'm going to read this again, Mark 3, 35. 
For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. So that's what we must be found doing. All right, not being a hypocrite, not being slack, not being lukewarm, on fire for the most high. All right, being an example. You know, that's what he raises us up to do, to be. Even if you in your city by yourself, man, you still an example. You know why? Because the most high is judging you for your actions. That's why he said, um, you know, let your light shine. You know, you're a city that's set up on a hill which cannot be hid. All right, so for now, we're going to go to um, Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua 1 and 8. Keep in mind, um, keeping the commandments is the will of God. You're going to be judged for your works. All right, Joshua 1 and 8. All right, so it's the book of Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. This is the book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe and to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. But what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? The point is that thou mayest um sir that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written that's the point observe to do cuz we're going to be judged according to our doings according to the things that we do while we have breath in our body we're going to be judged for it that's why it's important for you to put off the works of the flesh you know like it talks about in colossians like it talk about in ephesians right we got to put off these works all right become that new man as the bible tells put off that old man all right because we're going to be judged for being that old man we're going to be judged for being that new man that new person all right you know from the way you treat your kids your co-workers your parents all these things are in the bible how we should care ourselves all right so from there i'm going to first kings chapter 2 and verse 2 First Kings chapter two and verse two. I might be I might run through, you know, through this morning. Sometimes I teach kind of fast. I'm gonna try to slow it down. Um I was doing a class here last Sunday and the brother's like, Hey, hey, oh, can you slow down? Sometimes I get to running, thinking that everybody could keep up, but yeah, I'm gonna try to slow it down a little bit. All right, so first Kings chapter two and verse two. And it reads, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his stat, his stat, his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies. See, it ain't about our testimonies. Let me tell you about me and how, you know, things went for me. You know, bro, you ain't keeping God's commandment. You want me to stand up here for an hour and listen to you about you know how you feeling and what you think you know? Come on, man. No. We want to tell you how to keep God's commandments, how to walk right with God, how to be saved, how to get eternal life. That's what you should want, right? Rather than, you know, the little status you think you have in this world, man. Our people always are caught up with that. That's, that's from these different religions. And we forget that it's not about us. It's not about us at all. All right, I'm going to read this again from the top. Uh, actually, I ain't even read verse 2. Um, 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 2. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Verse 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written. In the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. All right, so we should want to do what? Keep his commandments and walk in all his ways, keep his statutes, his testimonies, as it is written. 
in the law of Moses. All right, so um, we we even do another exercise here uh, on Sundays uh, um, called um, "Where It Is Written." No, as it is written. I think it's as it is as it is written. All right, um, giving the brothers, you know, um, a mindset to know when you're reading stuff in the New Testament, where is it in the Old Testament? That, that, that's what goes right back to the study to show ourselves approved. We're going to be judged by these things. Then we apply the things that we was taught. All right. All right. So from there, I'm going to go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and 2. Yeah, this is a learning, learning, forever learning um, belief. We have to be taught. We have to be taught all over. Hebrews 5 and 12, the things that was uh, given to our forefathers by the Most High. And we have to keep these things. All right. So Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me tell y'all something. What's so heavy about this precept right here is that, uh, one, you have to be conformed, and two, that ye may prove what is good, perfect, and will, the will of God. Ye may prove that. How do you prove it? By your actions. You're applying the things that you're being taught. You're applying the things that's in the Bible. All right? So that's how you prove what is good, the perfect will of God. I want to read this other precept real quick. Um, I just thought about this. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Ephesians 5 and 17. I'm going to kind of divert a little bit, but it's all good. All right, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You see that? We could think we got so much wisdom in everything else. But when it comes to this Bible, what about the God, uh, God's will? Nobody want to talk about that. What is his will? The will that he have for us to do. I'm going to read this thing again. This is Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding. That's the point right there. We have to understand Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. We get it real quick. Now I'm going to try to get back on track. Try to get back on track. Because we're going to be judged according to our works. We're going to be judged according to our works. Let me go get this real quick in Psalms. But understanding what the will of the, of the Lord is. And it's not hard. Our people are being tripped up in all these different denominations that's what make it hard for us to try to understand this Bible. But this is our history, man. We have to come back to it, love it, desire it, you know, want to please God, want to do right. Um, try not to divert. All right, so this is um, uh, Psalms 119, I mean, Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. No, I'm sorry. I think 119. I mean, 40. I'm sorry. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I desire. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Thy law is within my heart. Because we just read in Ephesians, he said, Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So now, now that we understand what his will is, his will is for us to keep his commandments. That's his will. Well, I don't think God wants us to do this and do that. That's Shepsalene, not to your own understanding. Right? Remember, it also said his thoughts and our thoughts, his ways and our way, but he give us straight commandments at the same time. He give us straight commandments. Ain't nothing confusing about God's laws. When he said, uh, don't be a murderer, don't kill, don't steal, don't. Man, what's hard about that? Our people just don't want to do it. 
All right, but we will be judged by these things. All right, I'm gonna jump back on track real quick. Um, go to Hebrews chapter ten, verse thirty-six. Hebrews ten and thirty-six. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. Uh, for ye have need of patience. After ye have done the will of God, ye may receive the promise. You see that? You see that? We, we must do the will of God in order to receive the promise. The promise of what? Trying to life. Uh, let me show it to you real quick. Um, uh, let me see. Go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Uh, yeah, we'll start at verse 26. Let me see. No, hold on. Let me see. Where am I? Matthew. Okay, 16 right here. 16 and... I'll start at 26. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. All right. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. All right. And it reads, For what is a man profited? For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Here come that promise. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. You see that? Veil I say unto thee, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And when his kingdom come, your reward is to be right there with him in the kingdom. Why? Because you kept the commandments. Everything that was written in this Bible for us to do. All right? This is one thing we can't do is forsake the commandments, especially after we learn the commandments. Yeah, I think I'm going to touch that too. I think I'm going to touch that too. Um, Go to, let me see. Give me one second. Let me find this preset. Where you at? Uh. Peter. Let me see. First Peter chapter two. Uh, we'll start. Uh, first Peter chapter two. Second, Second Peter's chapter two. Yeah, uh, this is first Second Peter chapter two and verse twenty. Yeah, we'll read this first Second Peter chapter two and verse twenty. Um, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are entangled again, they are entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You see that? So I ain't no sense of learning this and then trying to leave it, man. You have to keep the commandments. You have to keep the commandments. You're going to be judged anyway. You might well just go ahead and do it. <laughs> You're going to be judged by keeping them or by not keeping them. Right? That's why he said if you lukewarm, you know, he'd rather you cold or hot. He'd rather you doing it, doing the commandments, or he'd rather you not doing the commandments. Don't be a hypocrite in this truth, man. All right? I'm going to read this again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So we don't want to be caught up like that, learning this, and then we get caught up in foolishness. We get caught up in our lust. 
We don't want to be like that, all right? We want to keep the commandments, keep the faith, uh, keep the faith, keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. That's what we want. That's what we want to be found doing. All right. Uh, so from there, I'm gonna go to First Peter's two and fifteen. First Peter's chapter two and verse fifteen. All right. This is the book of First Peter chapter two and verse fifteen. For if so. For so is the will of God, that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You see what it said? For if so, for, I don't know why I keep saying for if so. For so if the will of God, that with well doing, you see that with what? How is well doing? Doing the commandments. You put the silence with well doing, ye, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Some examples of ignorance of foolish men. I don't need God, I got money. I don't need God, um, um, you know, um, he ain't never did nothing for me. I heard somebody tell me that before. God ain't never did nothing for me. You know, our people are ignorant. They are ignorant, not knowing the things that they say. That's why Christ had to say those type of things. And Stephen, don't lay this to their charge. They know not what they do. Man, our people got to really, really be converted. Really, really, really be converted. I'm talking about for real. My daughter used to say, for real, for real. Got to be converted. Um, so go to First Peter's chapter 4. In verse 19. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. All right. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing. Man. As unto a faithful cre creator. You see that? Man, I got to read that thing again. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls. You see that? We going to suffer. We suffer what? Uh, being cutting off people. We suffer um, going through um, uh, depression. We suffer going through oppression. All of these things that we suffer. All for what? For the will of God. Now I got to read this thing again, man. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. You see that? He's a faithful creator. He's not going to leave us. It's that uh, First Corinthians, he says, um, you know, he... Um, uh, I'm paraphrasing. Leave us always. Leave us escape a way to escape. Ah, let me go pull this, man. I'm gonna butcher it. I'm gonna butcher it. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse twelve. Let's see. Yeah, we'll start right there. First Corinthians chapter ten and verse twelve. First Corinthians ten and twelve. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. It says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Verse 13. That had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, because we just read he's a faithful creator. Um, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptations also make a way to escape. You may be able, um, that you may be able to bear it. You see that? So he's a faithful creator. All right, <clears throat> let's go to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. No, I'm sorry, Gospel John, Gospel John. Do I got first? I'm sorry, it's first John. 
First John chapter two and verse seventeen. Yeah, here we go. First John chapter two and verse seventeen. All right, listen up. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. Eternal life. Eternal life. Uh, let's go over here real quick. Baruch. Baruch 4 and 1. He that doeth the will of God endureth forever. I want to endure forever. I wake up every day thinking about enduring forever. Guess what? That keep me away from fornication, away from stealing, away from lying, away from covetousness. It keep me away from those things because I meditate on eternal life, living forever. That's my goal. That's my passion. That's what I yearn for is to live forever. You know, I want eternal life, man. All right. So Baruch chapter four and verse one. This is the book of the commandments of God. And the law that endured forever. So you're going to forever be doing these laws and you're forever going to live. Because you're doing the will. This is what's forever. That's how you'll live forever by doing this. Let me read this again. This is the book of the commandment of God. And the law that endured forever. All that keep it shall come to life. We just read it. We just, I, I'm going to go back and read that precept again, man. This is heavy. Started from the top. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endured forever. All that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Shall die. Who wants to die, man? And you know to keep the commandments. That's why he said, uh, good master. Wait a minute. Who, who you calling good? There's none good but one. But if you want eternal life, you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. What's so hard about that? That's all we've been talking about since got online. It's keeping God's commandments. I'm going to go back to 1 John real quick. Chapter 2 and verse 17. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. All that have come to it shall come to life. Gotta keep God's commandments. All right, first John chapter 2, verse 17. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. You mean all the, the rappers and their money and the mansions and the, what is it called? Um MTV crib and the, all that's gonna pass away. Hit the lottery and they go get all the stuff that all that stuff gonna pass away? Yes. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abide it forever. So the only way you're going to live forever is by doing the will of God. What's the will of God? I delight to do thy will. Yea, thy laws it within my heart. Psalms 48. All right. Keeping the commandments is the will of God. Title of the class. And slash, you will be judged according to your works. All right. You will be judged according to your works. All right, so from there, I'm uh, going to go to um, the Gospel of John, chapter 6 and verse 38. The Gospel of John, chapter 6 and verse 38. All right, and it's Christ. He said, For I came down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. See that? So that's why I say the same thing about us. We don't want to hear about, uh, you know, our own testimony. It's not about us. It's not about, you know, you and, you know, your struggles and things like that. You pray the most high about that and he's going to open up doors. But, you know, other than that, uh, what uh, Christ did for us. All the testimonies don't mean nothing compared to that. All the testimonies don't mean nada, nothing. All right. So this is what he said. He said, um, for I came down from heaven, 
not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. All right. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 5, I mean, Matthew chapter 9, verse 6. Matthew 9 and 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 6. All right. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's the point. That's the point. Verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Everything's obeying God in the heavens. So what about here on earth? Hmm. We willingly want to be doing these commandments. We willingly want to be doing these commandments. Um, what did Paul say? Let's go get Paul real quick. First Corinthians chapter nine. I think I'm starting around by verse seventeen. First Corinthians chapter nine and verse seventeen. This is what Paul said. Um I'm going to start at 16. Verse 16. Sorry about that, scribe. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Remember, that's that's what I've been saying too. Like, um, it ain't about our testimony, how great I am, all the things I've been through and, you know, all the things I accomplished. No, it's not about that. All of these things going to pass away. All those statuses going to pass away. All right. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid up on me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And that likewise go for all of us. Woe be unto us if we don't do these commandments, be a light, be an example. Woe unto us. Right. Verse 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Man, who want to be in, who who want to be sitting in that seat, man? A dispensation, only a portion, only a party. Uh, three years and you out. Seven years and you out. Eleven years and you out. Two years and you out. Six months and you Who want to be in that seat? A dispensation of the gospel is given to you. You have to endure until the end. This is a mental, he said, our warfare is not carnal. This is a spiritual war. The war is in your mind daily. That's why I say I wake up doing what? Immediately thinking, I want to get the kingdom. Wake up, I want to get the kingdom. Wake up, I want to get the kingdom. That's just how I'm wired, man. I want the kingdom over all things, man. Over all things. All right. Uh, so from there, go to Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20. Yeah. Look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Uh, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's how we're supposed to be walking. Paul gave the perfect example of how when you are born again, when you are converted, you see what I'm saying? That you are. Uh, Christ walking in you in the life that you that that you live now, you live as an example. You see what I'm saying? Following Christ's footsteps. All right. He left us an example. It says that in Peter. Let's see, let's go get that real quick. 
Let's go back to Peter. Let's go back to Peter. He left us an example. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Uh, first Peter chapter two and verse, let me see, 21. First Peter chapter two and verse 21. All right. For even here unto ye all call, because Christ also suffered for us. Leave it us an example that you shall follow his steps. He left us an example. So guess what else the scripture says? That we are without excuse. We are without excuse. When it comes to um, not having the opportunity to get eternal life, we are without excuse. Not to live forever, not to abide forever. We are without excuse. He gave straight commandments. All right. He, we, he, uh, you know, the scriptures explain several, several different places, several different ways that we should uh, keep his commandments. Um, what he's saying, Deuteronomy, teach them to your children. When they're walking, when you walk by the wayside, when they land down, when they get up, all these different things, he give us examples. That this is our inheritance. Keeping his commandments is our inheritance. All right? His commandments is our inheritance. And we should keep it. Let me say it like that. All right. So from there, go to Luke chapter 22. Luke 22 and 41. Luke 22 and 41. I'm going to read 41 and 42. All right. So uh, this is the book of Luke, chapter 22, and verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them, bought a stone's cast, and kneeling down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You see that? That's how Christ felt about it. That's why he said in John um, 6 and 38, I ain't come to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So he said, nevertheless, not my will, let thine will be done. Um, the deacons just went over yesterday about how God um, uh, guide us. You know, the path, he seal our instructions in the uh, book of Job, Deacon Malachi pulled out, you know. And Proverbs, Deacon pulled out, Deacon not done. So we have to be, we're going to be doing the will of God regardless, man. You have to be doing this thing willingly, all right? That's why it's so important to be sincere in this truth, you know, because we're not doing things to please men. We're doing things to please the Lord, all right? So from there, I go to First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. First Peter chapter four, verse one. Let's do all things pleasing unto the Lord. All right. First Peter chapter four and verse one. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that had he for he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Guess what? He left us an example. He left us an example. All right, we we're without excuse. Um, I'm going to read this again. For as much as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Man, don't you know he said, not my will, but it, Father, if it, if it be so, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, let thy will be done. And guess what? Then he was crucified, right? Um, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Um, 
that he that suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. All right. So we're suffering as well. Um, well I already gave some examples. I'm going to give more examples. Um, um, things that we, we desire, we restrain ourselves from. Matter of fact, yeah, I'm going to get that next. We restrain ourselves from. Um, uh, I'm going to finish this out. Verse 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. That's how we should live the rest of our life, right? Not to the lust of men, things that we want, things that we see, things that we covered out the but to doing the will of God. That's how we should live the rest of our time in this flesh. All right. Uh, I was saying something about constrain ourselves. Constrain ourselves. Go to the book of... Let me see where this is at. Uh, I believe it's... I want to say 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. Yes, that's it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. We have to restrain ourselves from the lust of men. All right. So uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. You see that? It constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. That's why we're not living the rest of our life. Uh, in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God because of the sacrifice Christ made. And we want to honor that. We don't want to um, dishonor the sacrifice that he made. All right? This is our way to eternal life. That's why the scripture says um, he is a mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The mediator was him laying down his life. That was a sacrifice he made. All right? And if we, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. But right here it says, for the love of Christ constrained us. Why? Because we love him, keep his commandments. Constraining us because we thus judge that if one died for all, Christ died for the nation of Israel, then we're all dead. We're dead to the dead works. We should come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins. We're dead to them works. We're not doing that no more. All right. So from there, go to. Um, let's get an example with uh, Abraham. We use these a lot. We use the um, example of Abraham that he was willing to obey God. All right. Go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter eighteen, verse nineteen. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. This is what God said about Abraham. He said, For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, that means keep his commandments, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken uh, of him. All right? So I'm going to read that again. For I know him, that he will command his children and his house after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. They shall keep the way of the Lord. All right? So they should keep the commandments of God. That's the point. All right? So that's why um, when it came to him and his children in his house, we fall in that lineage. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, keeping his commandments, right? All right. Um, Noah, let's get an example on Noah, 69, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, a just man, and perfect in his generations. And Noah's walk with God. Uh, the point was he was perfect. 
He was perfect. He was perfect. These are the gen what made him perfect. What made him perfect by keeping God laws. By obeying God. God told him to go build an ark. Guess what Noah did? He went and built the ark. Right? Abraham told him, he told Abraham to go away from his family. Abraham went away from his family. All right? Uh, let's get that real quick. He was perfect. He was perfect. Uh, Psalms. Psalms, we'll get the one in 19. Psalms 19. I, read the, I started reading this earlier. Psalms 19 and 7. Um, Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So we, we keep his commandments, we become perfect. Why? Because we're going to be judged for keeping his commandments or not keeping his commandments. Uh, watch this one. Uh, First Peter. Some odd reason. Getting a lot of stuff out of Peter's today. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. First Peter 5 and 10 reads, But the God of all grace... Who had called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ. That's heavy already, man. After that, ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You see that? You see that, man? I'm gonna read that thing again. I read this one day, man. I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta keep that in my arsenal. I like that thing. But the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory, unto eternal life, right? By that sacrifice, which was Christ, but the God of all grace, who had called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while. We talked about suffering earlier too in uh, 1 Peter 4, the chapter before this. After ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. You see that? By keeping the commandments. The longer you keep these commandments, the, the stronger your spirit ought to be to want to keep the commandments. You can co continue to resist like we read in, uh, I mean, constrain. You can continue to constrain yourself like we read in 1 Corinthians. You know, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5 and 14, we read that in. All right, continue to strain yourself from the lust of the world. So many different temptations out here. All right, so go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. The book of Philippians. Try to, try to get make some sense of the scriptures, man. Try to make some sense of it. It's simple. It is simple. None of this stuff we're reading today is... No deep mysteries. What is the mystery of God? I remember God said that to me before. What is the mystery of God? Man, just keep these commandments, man. That's the, that's the mystery. It was for Israel. Everybody think it's for the whole world. It's for Israel. It's a history book, all right, of their forefathers and the promises given unto them. So we need to keep it, all right? This is Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You see that? Let this mind be in you. Because everything that he did, he wanted to please the Father. You walking around in this earth, you should want to please the Father every day. You see that? All right. So from there, go to First John chapter 4, and verse 17. All right. So let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, right? Watch this. First John chapter four and verse seventeen. First John chapter four and verse seventeen. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. You see that? As he is, so are we in this world. Right? Here, knowledge, love is made perfect. We talked about perfect. Keeping the commandments. 
right? That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. What's that precept at? I believe it's uh, Psalms. Psalms, it's two of them. 18 and 22. All right, yeah, and then we get Psalms 37, 37. So well, let's go over here real quick. Uh, Psalms 18 and 22. Read 22 and 23. Psalms chapter 18. Uh, for all his judgments were before me, and, did, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. You see that? So it's possible. It's possible. You can keep yourself away from your iniquity, the, the thoughts and the, the uh, wicked things that try to come up on you and overtake you, you can resist it. You definitely can resist it. All right, so this is um, Psalms 37, 37. We're going to Psalms 37, 37. Um, Psalms 37, 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Who want that peace, man? Who want that peace? That's what I'm saying. I, that's what I yearn for. You know, um, I don't let scoffing get under my skin. I don't let, you know, you know, disrespect get under my I don't let none of these things bother me. Why? Because I'm confident in this, in this Bible. I'm confident in what the promises are. As long as I'm doing this, hey, I'm good, man. This is only that's why he said, um, um, let's go get this real quick. Let's go get this real quick. I got I gotta pull this out real quick. Uh first John chapter two and verse fifteen. First John two and fifteen. That's why none of those things bother me. Watch this. First John chapter two, verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Um, it's not in the Father, but in the world. Even though I read 17 earlier, I'm going to read it again. For the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. That's the point. The world passeth away, and the lust. So I know all of these things are temporary. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. It's saying, you know, Walk with God like Noah did. Walk with God like Abraham did. Obey God. That's all. Hey, that should be your desire. All right? That should be what you within yourself all uh, want to do. All right? We just bring it forth to you, letting you know, hey, this is the way. Oh, man, where's that one at? Oh, man, I wish I could find that precept. Can't think of it right off the back in Isaiah. This is the way. The, um, the word is right behind you. I forgot how that thing goes, man. God, dog. All right. But anyway, this is the way, uh, this Bible, keeping these commandments, Listen to God's word, man. Listen to his voice. The voice is right here. All right. Uh, so from there, go to... Luke 21, 15. Luke 21, 15. Luke 21 and 15. Let's see. Here we go. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 15. For I will give you a mouth of wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. You see that? And how do you get that? Scripture says you get wisdom. With all I get and get an understanding, Right? So you want to get this wisdom. So, And when you're walking with the Lord, guess what he said? He said, I will give you a mouth of wisdom, which, uh, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Why? Because you're coming straight out of the Bible. That's why it's so important to study to show thyself approved, right? 
unto God. And then he can trust you as it talks about in Sirach 4 and 17. At first, he'll walk with you in, in your crooked ways until he can trust you. Just like it said about um, uh, Joseph in Psalms 105, you know? All right. Um, so from there, go to... Second Ezra 2 and 40. Second Ezra 2 and 40. All right, so uh, we're going Second Ezra two and forty. Second Ezra chapter two and verse forty. Uh, it says, "Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord." You see that. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God bide it forever. Right? Verse 40 again. Take the number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. That's how you're going to get to this point right here that we're reading about. You have to fulfill the law of the Lord. The number of thy children, whom thou longest for, is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Lord, that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. Uh, verse 4. What? That was it. That was it. That was it. I definitely could read on, man. But I'm going to stop right there. Um, so that the people might be hallowed. They're going to have a great name. A great, and the whole earth going to know who these people are, right? Just like they knew before. That our God fought for us, defended us, and we're the top nation, right? All right, so from there I go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 14 and 20. Ezekiel 14 and 20. All right, so this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. By their righteousness. Even so it is today. How are you going to be saved? By your righteousness, by keeping the commandments. Um, Deuteronomy 6.25 real quick. If some hadn't heard it before, here it comes. What is righteousness? Deuteronomy chapter 6, and verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord, our God, as he had commanded us. So that's what we have to be found doing, doing his commandments. We have to be found doing his commandments. Those are the things that are pleasing unto him by us obeying him. Um, Yeah, let me go read that real quick. Uh, Psalms, he want us to obey him. What is that precept? Man, when you don't read something in a while, it'll slip you. It will slip you. Always a precept at Psalms 86 and 10. I believe it is. Let's see. Let me get over here. Give me one second, Israel. Psalms 86 and 10. No, that's not it. Give me one second. Eighty, no, not eighty-seven. Maybe one 
second is real. Uh, what's that preset? What is that preset? What is that pre eighty? So, oh, it slipped me. It slipped me. All right. Nevertheless, uh, go to Matthew seven twenty one. Matthew seven twenty one. Anyway, uh, Matthew seven twenty one. Matthew chapter seven and verse twenty one. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You see that? Not everyone. That said unto me, Lord, Lord, <laughs> going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you could be doing all things in the world. I remember um, years ago, um, I knew this guy. His sister was a um, a pastor. And um, I had went to their church. And she was, t and she was saying how um, she used to be out feeding um feeding the homeless and things like that she said but her calling was she knew that her calling was to become a pastor so <laughs> you see what i'm saying but that's not that wasn't her job that wasn't a dana that wasn't god telling her that right it says not everyone that said unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven she wearing pants you know she's calling herself leading congregation so she's saying lord lord he said, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That's what's going to enter in. You have to be doing the will of God in order to enter into the kingdom. Right? Hey, the door is wide open for us to enter in. And it's simple things that we have to do. Keep his commandments. Find out what are the commandments. And we know we ain't talking about no animal sacrifice. So some people, that's when you have to discern when he's talking about animal sacrifice that's done away with and when he's talking about his commandments, which are not done away with. We can't kill today. We can't steal today. We can't commit a dodge today. These things are, these commandments are still in effect. But animal sacrifice is done away with. All right. Um, all right. So from there, we're going to be judged. According to our works. Let's jump into this real quick. Our works. Exodus 18 and 20. Our works. Uh, Exodus 18 and 20. Our works, Israel. That's what we're going to be ju judged by. All right. So this book of Exodus chapter 18 and verse 20. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. And shall show them the way where, wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. Right? That's where we at with it. We have to do the work. What is the work? Keeping his commandments. Keeping his laws. Being obedient. Watch this. Let's let's prove that the more. Second Ezra 724. Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 7. Second Ezra chapter seven and verse twenty-four. Uh, I'm in first Ezra. Look at this. Second Ezra chapter seven verse twenty-four. 
but the law, but his laws, but his law have they despised and denied the covenants in his statutes. They have not been faithful and not performed his works. You see that? We haven't performed his works. What are his works? But his law have they despised and denied his covenants. In his statutes, they have not been faithful and have not performed his works. We haven't performed it. Keeping the commandments. So that's what we want to do. Keep his commandments, right? All right. Um, so from there, go to uh, Sirach 1126. So rock eleven twenty six. Watch this, Israel. Hope y'all keeping up, taking notes. All right, so rock chapter eleven, verse twenty six. For it is a eat, for it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. It's an easy thing. He, hey, it's easy. That's why we all got an answer to. We're all going to see this day. We're all going to be uh, have to sit before the judge and see the Christ. We're going to get that. I'm going to read that one more time. For it is the easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways, according to the things that you have done. Right? So that's why it's so important for us to get ourselves together. We don't have to try to beat our parents down and try to get it. It's for you to get it. If they get it, they're gonna get it. Just let your light shine. You know, like me, I've been, I've been with IUIC for about seven years, and um, my mom's still not here. My brother, my sister, my uncles, my they not here. But they know what I'm doing. They seen a, a class. They seen, um, you know, I brought things to them. Sat down, went over scriptures with them. You think they want it? Hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, he said, I'll take you one of a family. Let's get that real, real quick. Let's get that real quick. Another sidebar strip. 3 and 14. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. This is going into like all our, you know, family is not going to come in. But that's okay. You endure. You continue being that light. It says, turn, O backsliding church, and said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion. You see that? So, hey, it might not be your whole household. It might not be. It might be just you. It might be just you and your rib. It might be just you and your kids. That's how the most I work, you know? Continue to be that example. Continue to be that light. All right, so I'm going to get back on track. Um, Sirach 16 and 12. Sirach 16, chapter 16 and verse 12. We're talking about um, you will be judged according to your works or according to your ways. Sirach chapter 16 and verse 12. As his mercy is great, so is his correction also. He judged a man according to his works. We're going to be judged according to our works. We're going to be judged according to our ways. We're going to be judged by keeping his commandments or be judged if we didn't keep his commandments. That's what we're going to be judged by. That's straight cut. That's clear. That's clear. I ain't no wiggling around it. No, you can't make that fit when this says one thing. That's it. Let's get that real quick, uh, the straight commandments. Sirach 7, I'm sorry, Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 21. Uh, let's start at 20. Second Ezra 7 and 20. For there be many that perish in this life, because they despise the law of God that is set before them. You willingly um, um, lay down with two women. You willingly um, go commit a fornication with a man, you know, the single sisters or whatnot. 
you willingly heard uh, that you shouldn't commit fornication, heard that you shouldn't get tattoos, and you willingly, would, you're despising the laws of God. Read that again. For there be many that perish in this life because they despise the law of God that is set before them. So many different examples give on how you despise the laws of God. You despise it. Being disrespectful to your Lord. Putting your hands on your Lord. Putting your hands on your real. All of these are despising the laws of God. We're supposed to comfort one another, love one another, cherish one another. Lead and guide, you know, that's the man role. The woman role is to, uh, to follow and build support. The scriptures call it a help me, right? All right, so verse 21. For God had given straight commandments to such as came, what they should do to live eternal life, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. If you do this, you're going to live forever. If you do this, I'm going to curse you. You're not going to get the kingdom. Um, uh, what's the name? Um, Lot's wife. She could have avoided that judgment. The angel said, don't look back. He was giving straight commandments. Get out of the city now. That's straight commandment and don't look back. What happened? I had to look back and see what was going on. You have to have your mindset like a flint that you're not going to look back on the things that you used to do, the things you used to have in this world, and go back to those things. Don't go back to smoking weed. Don't go back to being a whoremonger. Don't go back to being a prostitute. Don't go back to getting tattoos. Don't go back to shaving your beard off. Don't go back to uh, going to the club. Put those things. Don't look back on those things. How somebody say, hey, just, just keep it moving. <laughs> just keep it moving. Keep these straight commandments. All right, so from there I go to um, uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14 in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. So book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see that? So we, we think we can get away with things. Oh, no. He, cre he created you, and then you're going to try to deceive him. You're not deceiving men. That's what we have to get in our mind. We're not you should not think that you're deceiving a man. You know, a, a natural corner man rather than your creator. All right? Your creator knows all things. You, you can't fool him. We're going to get some precepts on that as well. All right? No time running short. I'm going to try to run through this real quick. Um, um, Ezra. No, I'm sorry. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18, 20. Ezekiel 18 and 30. Ezekiel 18, 30. Ezekiel... Chapter 18. I probably had to cut it short, but that's okay. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Ain't that a straight commandment? It's a straight commandment. Turn therefore. I mean, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. This is not the whole world. He's telling us, you got to get right. I want you to get right. If you want to lead all nations, rule them with a rod of iron. If you want to lead all nations, if they're going to bow down to your feet, like it says in Isaiah 49, 23. If you want to be in this position, this predicament, he said, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every uh, one according to his way, said the Lord God, repent. That's where we at with it. Once we repent, once we bethink ourselves, once we put off our ways and turn yourselves from your transgressions so your iniquities shall not be your ruins. Hey, we should want that thing. 
our iniquities not to be our ruins. We should want to repent. We should want to be think ourselves. All right, so uh, real quick, go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. I'm cut it short in about four minutes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. All right, it's the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. Um, 1 Corinthians, how do I be doing that? I need some new glasses, y'all. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. We're going to receive a reward. So what are you going to do, Israel? That's the question. Uh, one more precept. One more. Second uh, Ezra eight twenty six. This will be the last precept. Second Ezra eight. Second Ezra eight and twenty six. Uh, second Ezra chapter 8 verse 26 let me see yeah um, oh, oh look not upon the sins of thy people but on them which serve thee in truth regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in afflictions think not upon those that have walked vehemently I think I said that right. Be hindly uh, before thee, but remember them which accord, but remember them which according to thy will have known thy fear. Let it not be to thy will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, but to look upon them that have clearly taught thy law. You see that? That's how we want the most how to remember us. That we taught his laws, we kept his laws. We use a doer of the word and not a hearer. All right. So with that, Israel, I'm going to end the class on that. Um, I hope somebody got some out of it. Just one person, you know. One person got some out of it. I'll praise to the most high. I got up this morning and did my job. All right. So with that, man, uh, tune in. You got um uh, patient saints, you got a lot of things lined up for today. I don't have them written before me. Um, shoot, uh, go to the Booster Club, go to Original Royalty, you know, support the Booster Club, uh, support Original Royalty, all these different things we have out there. Uh, continue to send up prayers for leadership overseas and, um, you know, Africa bringing the forth the word, doing the will of God. All right, so uh, with that, uh, continue to tune in, continue to get built up, continue to uh, uh, pray. Study, pray, and apply. All right. So with that, it's real. Say shalom. Hey, love y'all. I'm Officer Michael out of the Houston camp. And Lord's will, I see you guys again soon. Stay in the spirit. Shalom. Most high Christ bless.